everyone today's topic of discussion is about significance of immature platelet fraction the following topic is uh, covered under the following subtopics which are for platelet production definition of immature platelet fraction how we measure immature platelet fraction applications of immature platelet fraction how we classify thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia and severity of bleeding so first of all we discuss about platelet production how we, they are produced platelets are produced first from the multipotent mematopoietic stem cell which gives rise to common myeloid progenitor this common myeloid progenitor gives rise to the megakaryoblast megakaryoblast gives rise to promegakaryocyte which ultimately leads to a stress of megakaryocyte from this megakaryocyte the cytoplasmic binding vesicles are broken down which gives rise to the platelets which are also known as thrombocytes Certain growth factors are released by the platelets, which include the platelet inner growth factor, vascular natural growth factor, transforming growth factor beta, keratinocyte growth factor, epidermal growth factor, fibroblast growth factor. So, coming to the definition of immature platelet fraction, it is an index of thrombopoiesis and can help to determine the mechanism of thrombocytopenia. So you know, these immature platelets, which are also known as critical platelets, then mainly analyzed by flow cytometry after the platelets had been stained with thiazole orange, which is a fluorescent dye which stains the RNA. Immature platelets or reticulated platelets or uh, platelets newly released from the bone marrow are larger in size and contain more RNA than mature platelets. The RNA is essential for intensive protein synthesis during the development of immature to mature platelets. Thus, the IPF which is immature platelet fraction is index of thrombophysis and can help determine the mechanism of thrombocytopenia. Remember, an increased immature platelet fraction in case of thrombocytopenia is an indication of increased platelet destruction or increased platelet consumption, whereas a decreased or no normal immature platelet fraction in the presence of thrombocytopenia is an indicator of decreased bone marrow production. So, coming to how we measure the immature platelet fraction. Immature platelet fraction can be measured by fluorescent platelets using oxygen dye. In the fluorescent platelet channel, by using a proprietary oxygen fluorescent dye, which is used to penetrate cell membrane, which ultimately stains the DNA and RNA of the cell. Here we measure the forward scatter light and fluorescent intensity, where the forward scatter light measure cell volume and fluorescent intensity measure the RNA and DNA content of the cell. Immature platelets have an increased volume and higher fluorescent intensity compared to mature platelets. And the immature platelet fraction is expressed as proportional value of the total fluorescent platelet count. So clinical applications for measurement of IPF which include differential diagnosis of thrombocytopenia, Thrombocytopenia and bone marrow failure, monitoring of thrombocytopenia during autumn and thrombocytopenia purpura and thrombocytopenia therapy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Coming to the differential diagnosis of thrombocytopenia, which is first clinical application in measurement of IPF, which includes thrombocytopenia can be caused by impaired platelet production or increased platelet consumption. And impaired product platelet production is due to bone marrow insufficiency. Example after chemotherapy, a side drug side effect, or after radiation therapy. Most often, an impaired product production is due to bone marrow insufficiency, which can be seen in condition after chemotherapy as a drug side effect or after radiation therapy. An increased consumption of platelets can be observed in conditions such as after bleeding in so-called thrombotic microangiopathy such as in uh, thrombotic thrombocytic paper and hemolytic mix syndrome. In autoimmune thrombocytopenia, the immune system produces antiplatelet antibodies which causes macrophages to engulf and thereby destroy the platelets. In order to compensate this loss of platelets in TTP and AATP, the microcaryocytes in bone marrow which produces excess of immature platelets. Second clinical application for measurement of IPF is include monitoring of thrombocytopenia and bone marrow failure. After chemo or radiotherapy, stem cell or bone marrow transplant, it takes a certain while until bone marrow produces platelets at a sufficient rate, again or not. Normally, immature platelets rise one or two earlier 
on the total gas earlier than total plate concentration. So by this, the measurement of immature platelets can be tested whether the bone marrow plate production is at other region or not. Plate transmission can be done in three words, which include the SDP, RDP, and PRP. Single donor platelet, random donor platelet, and platelet rich plasma. Where the RDP can be obtained by separating platelets from the whole blood, and SDP, which is of axial platelet donation, platelet rich plasma. It is a concentrate of platelet is present protein derived from the whole blood and which is centrifuge to separate the RPCs. So, out of these, the most common use of SDP, which is of exclusive better donation. Third clinical application for the measurement of IPF, which include monitoring of thrombocytopenia during AATP and TTP therapy. During successful therapy of these two diseases, the elevated concentration of immature platelets drops back to normal, approximately in parallel to total platelet concentration. Thrombocytopenia and its classification. So, how and what is the term which is used to describe thrombocytopenia? When the platelet count falls below 100 into 10 power 9 per liter, this is, this is the condition which we call as thrombocytopenia. There are three mechanisms of thrombocytopenia, which include decreased plate correction, abnormal platelet pooling, increased platelet destruction. So, decreased platelet production. It can be seen in following conditions such as in uh, bone marrow failure syndromes, such as cyclastic anemia, myelitis lysis syndrome, hyperplastic myocarditis, where it can be seen in conditions such as uh, alcohol, vital infections, ineffective thrombopoiesis, uh, which crawl syndrome. Increased better destruction. It can be seen in uh, immune thrombocytopenia or immune thrombocytopenia conditions. Abnormal platelet pooling. It can be seen in spleen disorders and uh, mass transfusions with the addition of platelets. Platelet count and severity of bleeding. So, when platelet count is above 15 to 10 power 9 per liter, there is no spontaneous bleeding can be manifested. It is can, when platelet count is between 10 to 50 into 10 power 9 per liter, which can manifest spontaneous bleeding in skin and mucous membranes, post traumatic bleeding can be seen. When platelet count is below 10 into 10 power 9 per liter, CES gentrovenary or gastrointestinal bleeding or intracranial bleeding can be seen. So, IPF is a predictor of efficacy of anti therapy and can be used as a risk of future cardiovascular thrombotic events. So, there are certain organizations to be benefited from using IPF, such as hospitals that deal with cardiovascular diseases, hospitals with oncological units, pediatric or neonatal units for differential diagnosis of neonatal thrombocytopenia or monitoring the cause of thrombocytopenia. Patients with regenerating marrows have high IPF. IPF is indirect means to better evaluate the necessity or timing of platelet transfusion. So remember two important points. An increased IPF in the presence of thrombocytopenia is an indicator of platelet destruction or consumption. A decreased IPF or normal IPF in the presence of thrombocytopenia is an indicator of decreased marrow production. The preference range of IPF is between 0.9 to 7%. Thank you.